Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's product review time again, and it might actually be considered a bit of a secondhand, almost retro product review. What is it? It's the Hewlett Packard slash Agilent E3610A bench power supply. Let's take a look at it. Now I said it was retro because this one is actually branded Hewlett Packard. It comes from the Hewlett Packard days. The model's been around for all the series of these bench power supplies has been around for a long time. And I believe you can still actually buy it under the Agilent name. And it comes in several different types. This is the single output uh, type as we'll take a look at, but it's also available in a dual and I believe a triple output as well. And you can usually find quite a few of these on eBay. Now, if you're after quite, a, you know, if you're after a top quality bench power supply for your lab, it's pretty darn hard to beat Hewlett Packard slash Agilent supplies. They make some of the best bench power supplies in the business. They're not cheap, but as I said, you can pick them up on eBay for reasonable amounts of money. Now, this one I've actually got here is the 110 volt version designed for the US market and other markets that use 110 volts. But of course, here in Australia, we're 240 volts. Now, uh, unfortunately, there is with these series HP supplies, there is no switch on the back to actually switch through to, uh, you know, make it switchable from 110 to 240 volts. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to crack this open and see. And that's what this uh, blog's really going to be about. It's not so much a review of this. It's going to be uh, to see if I can uh, modify this at all, or well, easily anyway, to do 240 volt operation here in Australia. Because hopefully inside, there'll be like a little jumper switch or there'll be a, on the main board, there'll be a transformer tap or something like that, that I can just easily swap over to 240. Here's hoping, but let's crack it open and find out. And just before we take it apart, I thought I'd power it up because I do have a 110 volt transformer here in the lab. So I thought I'd power it up and it seems to work just fine. And as you can see, I've set it to 10.00 volts and we're getting 10.02 and we wind it down and we, uh, you know, 2.19, 2.20, it's pretty darn close. And uh, if we use the constant uh, current, if we switch it around here to amps and we plug it in and it's currently set to uh, 0.25 amps for constant current and there it is 252 milliamps so it seems to work just fine and just a few tips if you're after a really good bench power supply like this uh, I highly recommend one that's got a low voltage range this one's actually got two ranges they call it two amps and three amps here and it's got a real meaty push button switch on there none of that soft button rubbish and uh, this one has a nice low voltage range of 0 to 8 volts uh, at 0 to 3 amps and 0 to 15 volts at 0 to 2 amps so uh, what that allows is you know if you get one of those uh, cheap JCAR power supplies or something the most common ones are like 0 to 30 volts and really they're not much you know they're just a too wider range for general electronics uses well, there's very few reasons you need to go above 15 volts. So a 0 to 15 volt supply is a beauty. And it's got constant current uh, mode as well. So it's got current adjust and voltage adjust. And this one actually allows you to actually set the current here. So you're holding the button and you can set the current without having to short out the output, which is the traditional way that you set uh, the constant current limit on a power supply. So it's nice if it has a constant current set button as well. Uh, but one of the most important things people uh, often uh, miss on a good lab bench supply is it must have a nice multi-turn pot. Now, this, these Hewlett Packard ones have a nice 10-turn pot. And as you can see, I can just tweak that and I can really finely tweak. I can just touch the knob and I can tweak that down to 10 millivolts resolution. No problems at all. Now, if you've got one of those cheap... Uh, bench power supplies with just the uh, voltage and the uh, current like it'll just have like a coarse and maybe a fine voltage current adjustment they're only single turn pots and they're no good you can't get the resolution you need on that and this has a 10 turn pot for the current set as well so beautiful and those pots are, are quite expensive so you, 
a lot of power supplies you'll actually um, you can pay extra to get the 10 turn pots but it's well worth it I highly recommend it and also it's got an earthed output as well this one's fully floating um, it's nice if you get the dual one with the negative rail as well but this is a single output so it'll do it it'll it'll do uh, the general job and if you've got a second one it's a single output because they're floating outputs you can they're not mains earth connected unless you link these two together the ground and the mains earth then you can actually join power supplies in uh, in series to get um, that positive and negative supply so if you only got a single output supply like this it, it doesn't matter get a second supply bingo you've got a positive and negative one and the best bench power supplies you can get like this one are, the, are a linear supply they're not a switch mode supply so that gives you much better noise and ripple performance on the output that you really just are very hard pressed to match with the switch mode power supply but because it's linear it needs a big heat sink on the back and it is a bit wasteful in terms of um, energy consumption for a given output power but uh, who cares about that noise and ripple is uh, much better now I've got a couple of switch mode lab supplies up here I've got this uh, power tech big 40 amp uh, one here which is to get that in a linear supply 40 amp output up to 15 volts that's you know quite a beefy linear supply so it's not a bad option for a switch mode and this one up here is a an Altronics uh, kit as well and it's a switch mode supply as well but it's uh, noise and performance figures aren't nearly as good as a good quality uh, linear bench supply like this Hewlett Packard one and the linear ones are far more reliable as well now as nice as this power supply is, it's not, per it's not the perfect bench supply because the perfect bench supply would have an output load switch here to switch the output off and on. But unfortunately, these series of uh, Hewlett Packard ones don't have that capability. Now the interesting thing to note about the construction of this thing is that it doesn't have any screws on it at all. It's got these little uh, tabs here like this that you can see, so it looks like these are uh, it looks like the back panel at least uh, flips off and maybe the front panel as well because there's a couple of tabs down there so let's give that a go shall we yep yep there we go That's it. Smaller screwdrivers to go there, and bingo, that just pops off. And it looks like there are no extra uh, screws on there, so it looks like I think that top cover is just going to pop. Up. Yeah, the top cover pops off, so I've got to pop off. Looks like I've got to pop off the front panel as well. So let's give that a go. Oh, yep, yep. Oi, there we go. And ta-da! Too easy. Wow. It just pops off and let's see if we can get this lid off. Ta-da! There it is. Beautiful. I love it. And that was very nice indeed. I love how it just popped off. And this uh, front panel just uh, hinges on the wires here, which we'll take a look at. But there's the big... Uh, uh, transformer as you expect in any linear supply there's the output transistors there they're a 2N6056 made in Mexico in a TI3 package just hooked onto the heatsink here some lovely uh, grounding wires just going over there and uh, the board looks very nice indeed as you can see there's the main uh, filter cap and you'll notice that they've got the uh, They've got the elastic rubber goo there on the cap and it's also on this side here as well and that's a nice little touch to ensure that that capacitor doesn't uh, vibrate and uh, and fall off and cause damage so they've got some more of that on uh, the cap over here so nice little attention to detail there a couple of smaller heat sinks um, pretty standard um, it's a very sparse uh, layout some of the um, standard op amps there I recognize that's an LF442 uh, LM393 LF411 
So, pretty basic stuff really. But that's what it, you expect in these standard linear supplies. There's nothing fancy at all. And they've got some nice 10 turn pots in here too. They're obviously to uh, tweak and adjust the output range. And as you can see, the front panel here just sort of hinges off like that and it's really uh really is quite nice there's those there are those uh lovely 10 turn pots they're actually uh burns ones so they're super high quality but you know you'd expect that because you pay top dollar for a hp uh hp lab supply so you'd expect top quality 10 turn pots that'll last you a lifetime pretty much it's uh there's another hp branded uh board in here and it's got some um they, they look like little custom custom devices, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to have a look at those, but they're obviously just driving the display there, the analog, they're probably like an analog to digital converter, and then uh, and then a display driver as well. There's another couple of 10 turn pots up there for adjustment, but I like it. Nice little cable looms, and it's just quite nice construction. Beautiful. And interestingly, it looks like there's nothing holding this board in at all. Ta-da! There it is. Look at that. It just comes out as one complete unit. Beautiful. Now, as for modifying this for 240 volt operation, I don't see any internal jumpers on the board at all to actually do that or uh, taps on the transformer that are easily accessible because here's the input uh, mains wiring and it goes all the way down to a real main switch on the front and then back and then it looks like straight into the transformer there so unfortunately I can't access the bottom side of that transformer there because uh, it looks like it's not trivial to take this thing out because if you look down in there you will see uh, where is it you will see that the output taps on the transformer are soldered directly onto the board down there so I could undo these four screws here but uh, really, the transformer is um, still permanently attached via those direct solder connections. So it looks like I'm going to have to actually take off this back panel here. And to do that, I'm going to have to take off these uh, TO3 transistors. I'll have to unscrew and unsolder those from the board to get at the transformer. What a bummer, but oh well, let's do it. So there you have it, we've got the heatsink out and I'm massively disappointed. Look, the wiring goes directly into the transformer. There are no uh, solder tabs on that at all. There are no taps so that I can change it to 240 volts. So oh, what were HP thinking when they did this? Uh, they obviously use a different transformer for each market. They could have just had one with taps, surely. Well, there you go. That's a real bummer. I was hoping there'd be a transformer tap in there that I could switch it to 240 volts. So, but no, it looks like they use a totally different transformer. That's why it's got uh, standard stamped on it because uh, on the actual transformer itself, because this is the standard model. I think it's option like 03 or something if you want the 240 volt model. So just beware of that when you're shopping around on eBay or something trying to buy these babies are a really nice supply. I highly recommend you pick one up if they're at an affordable uh, price. But unfortunately it doesn't have a load switch on it, but hey, that's not a killer. You can't beat a quality HP lab supply on your bench. Go for it. And because I don't remind people of this very often, in fact I don't think I ever have, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember to subscribe. There's a subscribe button up there, round about there somewhere. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching on eevblog.com, Go over to my YouTube channel. There's a link uh, somewhere over that side of the page uh, that allows you to do that. And when you subscribe, it gives you the option to uh, get automatic email as soon as I upload a video onto YouTube. Because if you don't know, I upload my videos onto YouTube first before they make it through to eevblog.com and the RSS feed and the iTunes feed. Sometimes uh, 12 or 24 hours before 
uh, they actually make it to those sites. They're already on YouTube. So if you want to get my videos first, that's the way to do it. If you wonder how everyone gets the first comment on there, people love to get the first comment. That's how they do it. They get signed up for the automatic email. As soon as it's public, you get it. Beauty. And uh, also, if you YouTube also have an RSS feed. So if you want to do it that way as well through the YouTube channel, then there's buttons over here on my main site, evblog.com. Oh, it's all too hard. There's so many options. There's an iTunes option button there somewhere as well. If you got your iPhone, I do a podcast version. It's lower resolution than this one. Uh, the uh, YouTube version is HD. It's a 1280 by 720. The iTunes version is, uh, two se is 480 by 270. Um, but a lot of people, a couple of thousand people do that option. So please, and also don't forget to uh, give thumbs up for the videos if you like them and comment as well. That's down below, literally speaking. Almost forgot one thing. In case you weren't aware, I'm now a full-time video blogger. This is my full-time gig. And to pay for it, help pay for it anyway, you'll hear more about this in the future, but to help pay for it, I am accepting recurring PayPal donations. So if you go to eevblog.com, around about there somewhere, there's some buttons that allow you to sign up and help pay for this thing so that I don't have to accept sponsors and the wife won't make me go back to work to earn a real living. Thanks. See ya.